Well, good morning, everybody, and morning. welcome. Uh, it's good to have you all here. We keep having some new faces during this time, and that is wonderful. So thank you for stepping out and coming and worshiping with us. Those of you who are joining us on Facebook, thank you for tuning in. We're glad you're with us as well. And uh, as we begin our time together, I want to invite you to read some scripture with me. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 100 together. That'll be our call to worship as we prepare our hearts to worship. I'm going to invite you to stand with me. So would you please stand? And those of you at home, would you stand with us? And we're going to read Psalm 100 together. The words will be there on your screen. So go ahead and follow along as we read this together. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise, his courts with praise, and give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations." this time we'll continue with our worship so Tara so I'll let you all right remain standing and we will begin our worship site <clears throat>
All right, now with announcements. So we had a garage sale this weekend. It was awesome. It was amazing. All those, yeah, you may see, sit down. So. so we had a lot of donations. So I thank those that did donate to the garage sale. I thank you for those that came and, and gave us money, and we hit our goal. So um, God blessed us again, so thank you for all that. But with that said, we still have plenty of stuff that's back there. So directly after church, if you'd like to go back there and see some stuff that you may need or may not need, it's still available. So it's back there for you to grab. Um, but thank you to those that um, helped with that because that was amazing and um, huge for the church. Um, next Sunday is Flag Day, the 14th. So um, the church, along with the Harvest D Free Senior uh, Group, with Joseph and his group, they're going to help us with flags. So what that is, is so the Lions um, help Kiwanis with flags, and so Harvest E Free seniors get to participate with that. So um, the six times that we do that this year, um, the kids get to help do that. But we could also use some adults to help if they feel like they want to help because it makes our town look beautiful, and it's awesome to be a part of it. But it's pretty early. We get up there pretty early, about just after 5 in the morning. So... We'll be the, you have to be there at 5.45. We leave by 6 a.m. to lay them out, and then we pick them up that evening. Be there at 5.15, 5.30 to pick them up, and um, we do that about six times a year. But anyway, that's this next Sunday's Flag Day, so we'll do that. And then those at home that are on Facebook, um, this would be a good time, if you haven't yet, to prepare for communion. Today is the first Sunday of this month, so we will have communion later. So get whatever resources you have to do that if you got um, chips, crackers, if you got a juice or water, um, even soda if you have to, but just um, stay focused on, on what we're going to be doing with it. So, Good. All right, thank you, Terrace. Uh, we were talking about another announcement, so this one was uh, for June 25th. Would you mark this on your calendar? It's a Thursday evening, June the 25th, and we have some guest artists coming to Harvest. Uh, their names are Kevin and Heidi Cheng. Uh, Kevin is uh, an exceptional pianist, and Heidi is an exceptional violinist, and they come together and they create wonderful music. And so they're coming to Harvest and going to be uh, sharing with us. So we want you to be aware of that. More information coming your way. So thank you. Thank you, Terrace, for the announcements as well. Let's uh, pray together, and then we'll press on with our worship time. Our Heavenly Father, again, we pause on our Sunday morning to enter right into your presence. Lord, we know that we have permission to approach you because of what your son, Jesus Christ, has done for each of us on the cross. And so, Lord, we don't come boldly to you based on our merits, but rather we come boldly to you based on what Jesus Christ has done for each of us. And so, Lord, as we come into your presence this morning, our desire is to place ourselves on the back burner and place you front and center and honor you and give you the glory that is due you. So, Lord, may you be honored by our songs. May you be honored by our prayers. Lord, as we study your holy word together, Lord, may we handle it and may you be pleased with what we do with your word. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, would you please stand and we will continue with our worship set.
At this time, I invite you to uh, join us as we remember what Jesus Christ did for each of us. Of course, that's his death on the cross, but also his resurrection, and we do so through observing communion together. And so as you were entering the sanctuary, and we invite those of you who are watching this morning just to go ahead and uh, get something that you could use as a symbol uh, of what Christ has done for the bread, you know, you can get bread or a cracker. Uh, for the juice, you can use water or even a little bit of Diet Coke. Um, 
I want you to know that's not sacrilegious. Remember, uh, what we have here are symbols, and these symbols represent uh, the shedding uh, of Christ's blood as well as his very body being nailed to the tree for our sins. And so we just want you to participate with us at this time. Uh, the passage that prepares us for, as well as gives us instruction regarding the communion, the Lord's Supper, is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, I'll begin reading in verse 23. What we'll do is uh, we'll read about the bread, and then we'll all partake together the bread, and then I will follow that by reading the rest of those verses that pertain to the cup. And after reading those verses regarding the cup, we will uh, try and pry that lid off of our containers together, and uh, we'll partake of the cup together, okay? So that's how we'll do it together. So 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the instruction is this, and this comes from the Apostle Paul, and he says to us, he says, I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. So I want to invite you all then to go ahead and uh, pry that little cell phone piece. I think that's what it is there. There it is. That uh, flimsy cellophane piece. Take it off. There's the wafer. Let's partake together. Continuing with our scripture. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance for me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let's together go ahead and uh, pry the lid off of the cup there, and let's partake together. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the memory, the reminder of what you did for each one of us on the cross. Lord, if it wasn't for your death, there would not be the forgiveness of our sins. But Lord, if it was not for your resurrection, we would not experience life eternal. So Father God, thank you for dying and coming back to life on our behalf. In Jesus' name I pray.
question for you as we look at God's Word. What, bar, what body part is expendable? If you were asked to give up a body part, which body part would you sacrifice? Would you give up an eye? I mean, you do have two. Or how about your ear? Surely you can part with one. How about a finger? Would you be willing to give up a finger? How about your kidney? What body part is expendable? And if you were to give up a body part, would it impact your life? Well, this morning we'll be informed that the church is much like the body. As you know, the body has many parts. So too, the church, the church body has many parts. Each body part, and you will agree with this, each body part that we have is very important, isn't it? We don't really want to part with any body part. And it's also true regarding the church. Each body part of the church, each person of the church is important. Because the health and the operation of the church depends on each one of us. Well, I want to invite you to join me in Romans chapter 12 as we continue our series. We've been engaged in a pretty lengthy series on the book of Romans we're in Romans chapter 12. There are 16 chapters, so we will continue in the book of Romans for a while longer. But this morning, we're in chapter 12. We're going to be looking at verses 3 through 8 together. Verses 3 through 8 of Romans chapter 12. Last week, we began chapter 12, and as we looked at the first two verses, verses 1 and 2 of Romans chapter 12, communicated to us our relationship that we are to have with our Heavenly Father. And if you remember those verses, uh, God asks that we would be living sacrifices. In other words, that we would commit our total being to Him. And that's the relationship He desires with us. Now as we come to verses 3 through 8, we see our relationship regarding our church body, our church family. And so that's what Paul has to say here in Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. This is his instruction regarding, regarding our relationship with the church. So follow along as I read verses 3 through 8. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it 
cheerfully. Here ends the reading of our scripture passage at this time. What this passage does for us this morning, and I want to share this with you, is that this passage here, verses 3 through 8, reveals four things about you and your role in your church. Okay? Four things are said about you and your role in the church body. So let's take a look at those four things together. Here's number one. You have been gifted by God to serve. Okay, that's point number one. You, each of you, have been gifted by God to serve. Now, one of the great supernatural expressions from God is this. When you place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, you receive a gift from God. God, because of his goodness, places within you a gift, a spiritual gift. We call it a spiritual gift. And this gift comes from God. So what I want you to know and understand is that if you do know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he has equipped you with a spiritual gift. Let's look at a few verses that verify this very truth. First of all, in verse 3 of Romans 12, it says this, Do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with the measure of faith, God has given you. See that there? You have a gift given to you by God. Later on in verse 6, we have these words. Follow along. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. Different gifts according to to the grace that was given us. Now, both passages reveal that God gives His children, those that belong to Him, He gives them a spiritual gift, maybe more than one spiritual gift. And here's something to understand. The gift that God has given you is to be used for the benefit of the church. So let me just say that once again. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you've placed your faith and trust in Him You have received a gift from God, and that is a spiritual gift. This spiritual gift that you have received is to be used for the benefit of the church body. Look at another verse with me, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Here's what it says. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given. Again, we're being reminded we've been given a gift. Why have we been given this gift? Look at the end of verse 7 there. The manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common Good, for the common good. You've been gifted to benefit your church family. And God has determined in the context in which this gift is to be, to be applied, and this gift is to be applied in your church. So number one, number one is you've been given a spiritual gift by God. Number two, point number two, you are to serve Humbly, that's in verse 3. You are to serve humbly. Let's look at verse 3 together. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith. Now evidently, the, the Apostle Paul who wrote these words was dealing with some kind of an issue with the Christians during that time. And the issue was something to do with pride. That's what he was dealing with. There's pride involved here. That's why he wrote these words. The reason he wrote these words regarding pride is because man, that's us, we have a tendency to maybe gloat over our particular gift that we have. Uh, We have a tendency to compare with others. And also we have, and get this, oftentimes we downplay our gift. We downplay it. Oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. All the while, it's an expression. That is an expression of pride. So whatever, man, so whatever behavior we manifest, whether we gloat or whether we compare, or even if we kind of 
downplay the spiritual gift of it. Whatever it is, it's a form of pride, a form of pride. Speaking of pride, listen to this story. A man who had a high opinion of himself stepped on a coin-operated scale that dispensed a card giving his weight and comments about his personality. After reading the card, he handed it to his wife and said, Hey, take a look at this. She took it and read it aloud. And it said, You are a dynamic, a born leader, leader, handsome, and much admired by women for your personality. And then he says, Hey, honey, well, give it a, give it a second look. Look at it. And she added, Hmm, I see. I see you got your weight wrong, too. Okay. So anyhow, when it comes to spiritual gifts, number one, God has given you a spiritual gift, and the context in which that gift is to be applied is in your church body, your church family. Second of all, that gift was, is to be operated with humility, humility, because we have a tendency to kind of uh, feel good about ourselves, and, and you know, it's not bad to feel good about yourselves, but we've got to do it in the right, right uh, framework. You know, feel good about yourself because God has blessed you. We want to do it that way. But then we also would get involved in this comparison. You know, we see somebody that works real hard to put on a church function. When it's all said and done, they go, you know, I could have probably done a little bit better than that. I didn't like how they organized this. I didn't like the way they did the food on the, on the tables. I mean, okay, comparison. Not good, not good. We need to exercise the gift that God has given us, and we do so in a humble manner with humility. Number three here. Here's what Romans 12 says about our giftedness. Number three is this. You make a unique contribution. Okay, you make a unique contribution to your church family. <clears throat> now, referring to a bodily il illustration here, uh, Paul makes it clear that our contribution to the church is unique. Now, look at verse 4 with me. Just as each of us has one body with many members... Okay, we all have a body with many parts. And these members or these parts do not all have the same function that we agree with. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So the point is, the body has many members, but the members, the parts of the body, don't do the same thing. They are unique. Uh, the little toe in your body performs a function that is completely different than your knee, okay? And your knee's task is quite different from that of your hands. So now when it comes to the church, your role and giftedness is different from other church members. You occupy, you occupy a unique role in the life of your church. Now, as Paul shares with the body illustration, not only does he desire to communicate that your giftedness is unique, he also wants to teach that every gift is important. Now, the body, once again, our physical body, the body needs blood vessels. They're very important. The body needs the little toe. The little toe is important. All body parts are important to the health and function of your body. It's important. Your giftedness, here we go, follow me on this. Your giftedness, the spiritual gift that God has given you, is important to the health and function of your church. The church needs you. You've been uniquely gifted and plugged into the church to bring health as well as help it function. Now, what you're going to learn as you look at spiritual gifts, uh, you know, there's, there's lists of spiritual gifts in Scripture. There's some here in, in chapter 12 where it talks about prophesying and serving and so forth. You can go also to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and you'll see a list of, of uh, spiritual gifts listed there. And so what you're going to find out is 
these are kind of general in nature, meaning, here's what I'm saying, uh, you may have the gift of service, and that is great, but the way you express your gift of service is completely different than the other individual who has the gift of service. That's why I mean you are so unique. Okay? When it comes to the gift of being an encourager, okay, one individual has wonderful hugs and encourages people through physical touch and a hug. They just have the gift of doing that. But the next person who has the gift of encouragement knows the right word to say at the right time. Okay? So they have the gift of service or the gift of encouragement, but they're unique in how that gift is applied. And God has arranged it so that you occupy a unique role in your church. There is no one who can serve like you. There is no one who can encourage like you. There is no one who can extend mercy the same way you do. You have been gifted by God, and your giftedness is unique. So God, number one, he's given you a gift if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Number two, we need to look at our gift with an attitude of humility. Number three, your giftedness is unique to you especially and how it is applied within the church body. And then we come to number four. Here's what we learn from chapter 12 regarding spiritual gifts. Here's number four. You are part of something bigger. You are part of something bigger. You see, the church is just not the pastor. Okay, that's not the church. Uh, the church is not just you. You're, you. You alone are not the church. The church, I mean, it's not just the worship team. Okay? All of us together are the church. The church is meeting today here in this building, the Harvest Church. It's not just one individual. It's us corporately. We are the church. You are part of something bigger than yourself. Let's look at a passage of Scripture, I believe, that communicates this whole idea of something bigger than ourselves. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to look at uh, verses 14 through 20, so follow along as I read those verses. Now the body is not made up of one part, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong then to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. We are part of something bigger. And this verse here, just let me reread re a verse here. It says this. In fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. How does that make you feel, that biblical truth? In fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. How do you feel about that? You're unique. You're special. And you're part of God's church. Now, as we ramp up things, we do so with a brief review. And we've done it in the past, but here's the review. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have received a spiritual gift directly from God. And this gift is to be exercised in the context of the church. It's not for you alone. It's for the benefit of the whole church body. And you're supposed to exercise it with humility. And remember, you are part of something bigger. It's more than just about you. It's about God's church. And you have been placed in God's church to accomplish and fulfill a particular role. Okay, you're important. 
your input. So the church depends on your giftedness. We depend on you. We do. Challenge as we come to the end. Here's your challenge. Are you serving your church Why not? Why aren't you? Of course, I'm making an assumption here. Many of you are. You are blessed. God is pleased. But, but maybe you're thinking, well, no, I really haven't plugged in. you got to know the church needs you. Remember, you've been gifted, and your giftedness is unique. God has arranged, arranged you in a certain way that you occupy a very important, unique niche in the life of the church. So we need you. So if you're not serving, think about plugging in. So the question is, okay, uh, I asked you, why are, are you serving your church? And I made an assumption and said, no, you're not. Now, one of the reasons that people say, well, no, I'm not really serving my church because I really don't know my spiritual gift. Okay? Let's eliminate that excuse, all right? For you, as you depart, maybe you picked it up first thing as you came into the sanctuary, but as you depart, um, on the table that has the box for offering, on that table, the offering table box, there is also a stack of papers. Uh, I want you to take one for yourself, for your spouse, even for the kids if you want to. Uh, What it is, it's a spiritual gift inventory. There are 80 questions Uh, It's very self-explanatory, but you answer those questions, and then at the end, it gives you an idea. Now, understand, this particular survey or assessment is not going to say, okay, this is your gift. It's not going to say that. What it's going to do, it's going to put you in the category, at least give you direction as to what your gift may be. So I want to encourage you to grab a copy of those spiritual gifts assessment and go home and uh, answer those questions. And get a good idea, at least a good direction. Okay, I, I seem to have a gift in, you know, hospitality. Or I have a gift in serving, you know. You need to do, when you do that, uh, you know, that's good. But uh, here, here's the bad thing. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll take that. We're curious now. Okay, what's my gift? You're curious, right? You want to get one of those papers. You want to answer those questions. And that's good. That's good. But here's the bad thing. You'll answer the questions. You'll get the indication of what your giftedness may be. You'll smile. And then you'll do nothing. Okay? You'll, you'll show your honey, show your wife hey, or your husband, hey, honey, look it. I got the gift of mercy. You said I don't really care. I do, you know, whatever it may be. You know, that's good. But what you'll do is you'll leave that p- copy on the coffee table, okay? And it'll get... Uh, coffee stains, and you'll, you won't do anything about it. I, what I want to encourage you to do is plug in, plug into your church. In fact, that is one of a, a frequent discussion that we have as a leadership in the church is how can we get people involved? How can we get people involved? Uh, maybe you've heard this rule. It's, they call it the 80-20 rule. 80% of church uh, ministry is done by just 20% of the people. We would sure love to see that change. And and so that's one of our prayers as a leadership. And it's also a question we're always asking is, how can we encourage people? Well, this morning, we as a leadership want to encourage you to plug into Harvest. There's so many things. We're expanding our ministry as a church. And if you have any kind of interest in technology and audiovisual, you know, because of the coronavirus, you know, we have gone live on Facebook. And we're talking about posting stuff on YouTube, but uh, we got some gifted people that are doing that right now, but they can't do it every time, you know, so maybe you have a gift in that. And God has uniquely placed you in harvest to exercise that gift, to help the media, you know, to, to flourish and advance. But not just that either, there's other things, there's other things, and uh, just ask questions. In fact, we can have Tracy dig it up. We have a, and it was first organized or put together with Denise. Remember, 101 ideas or ministry tasks in the church? 101. So 
So we got that available. So you're wondering, okay, what can I do? Talk to Tracy. We'll get you the 101 ideas. But first, get the copy of the Spiritual Gifts uh, Inventory. Take that and uh, get a good idea of how God has wired you and put you together. Well, that brings us to the end. And as we do, I want to part with a benediction. And so would you stand to your feet with me and let me give you a benediction as we close out our time together. And as we close out our time together, those of you on Facebook, this benediction is for you as well. But as we end our stream, we will go into a time of prayer. And so feel free, those of you on Facebook, to uh, message us with a prayer request if you'd like, and we'll definitely pray for you. But here's your benediction. May the God who equipped you to serve his church for his glory empower you with love and grace as you exercise your gifts, bringing encouragement and blessing to your church family. In Christ's name we pray.